Opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. Randy, if you don't mind, text, uh, text Mama tell her we get it started. Uh, in this day, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecies, it, should, it can and it sh uh, will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent, yeah. that they might live. But you don't want to know. Let's open up to... Uh, Let's do John chapter uh, seven verse. John chapter. What am I on? John chapter seven verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. It's John chapter seven verse fourteen. the midst of the feast, Yahshua went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? All right, so they asked a question to Yahushua. It's like, how Yahushua know about letters? And he never even learned them. You know what I mean? Like, how does he know letters? He never learned. All right, let's hear about it. Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. All right, he said, My doctrine is not mine, it's his that sent me. Don't worry about how I learned it. If then he's going to tell us how we know it's real. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He said, if you do the will of the Father, you will know. What that, that, what that does to us, is that cancels out. People be looking at it, but how do you know that your religion is all these different Christian denominations? How do you know that you read the Bible right? Simply put, let me, let me explain. If you do what the books say, you will know whether somebody telling the truth about the Bible or not. That's it. That's the word from the Most High God. Right? There's a lot of stuff we look in the book. Ain't nobody going to say it's wrong. Some people might say, you know what people say? See, all religions are the same. The core principles of what they teach is the same across all the religions. All right? Well, then do the one that's in this book. You do it. Just start doing it. Just be like, okay, the one that's in it's the same as every other religion. Just start doing what's in this book then if it's the same. Right? First of all, at first it's going to prove that you don't believe that at all. You know what I'm saying? That thing gets to tell you all everything you can't do. That thing going to line your butt up. You'll be like, nah, I don't believe that at all. Right? But then if you actually do it, then you'll be like, oh, now I see why this is the truth. Most I got to reveal it to you. Right? Job tells the beginning of, of understanding is what? Where's knowledge? Where's knowledge? And turning away from sin is with the fear of God. One of them. No, it's the beginning of knowledge is the fear of God. Turning away from sin is wisdom. That sounds about right. Yeah, that's, Where's that? I don't know. <laughs> Job something. I'm going to try one. Job 14. If I don't get it, I don't get it. Job 14. It's at the end. What's the last verse of 14? If it ain't 14, I ain't even going to kill no time. Cause that thing is shot in the dark for sure. I ain't read Job in a minute. All right, when we look at it, all you have to do is obey what the book say. You may not understand, like, you know, how the world going to end and who the true Israelites are. And, and you may not understand whether his name is Satan or Lucifer and all these other deep things that we be talking about. That's cool. But... Just understand, when the man say, don't lie, don't lie. Like, you get that. Don't sit here. Don't try to act like that part is just too deep for you. Like, you don't get it. You get when the man say, don't lie. The man say, don't, don't commit adultery. Don't commit fornication. Don't steal. All those things. Like, you get those things. 
Those things ain't. That's not no 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 strong mystery for you. What's the last verse for you? It wasn't fourteen. Nah. I think it wasn't fourteen. Right? Those things ain't no mystery for you. So it's important that when we come here, that we start off and we understand. First of all, if you want to try to understand this book, you want to try to get somewhere with the Most High God, you got to obey. You're killing time. Give me James. Give me James chapter 1. What do I want? James chapter 1 or 2? Goodness great. I can't remember nothing tonight. James. Give me James 1 verse 18 maybe. James chapter 1 verse 18. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's, about, it's about us hearing the word and then learning the word. Right? And the only way, according to what Yahushua just told us, the only way you're going to learn it is if you actually do it. He said, those who do the will of my father is those who will know whether what I'm telling them come from me or come from the most high God. Right? So at the end of the day, you have to actually do it. And once you do it, then you can make, you can make moves. You can learn it. You got to do it to learn it. It's James, I want to say chapter uh, verse, chapter 1, verse 18. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Uh-huh. Talking about the apostles. Keep going. <clears throat> Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. He said be swift to what? Hear. Man, you got to be quick to hear that word. That, boy, that thing, listen, listen, I don't, I don't even get it. That thing, the word being taught, the right word being taught. Man, you got to be quick to hear that thing. That thing, man, let me, let me go ahead and get it. Let me go ahead and hear it, right? What else? Slow to speak. Slow to speak. Shut your darn mouth. And slow to wrath. And slow to darn wrath. Calm down, right? Keep going. For the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. Mm-hmm. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity mm -hmm. of naughtiness. Superfluity, you know what that means? Being darn extra. That's, the thing, that's exactly what that thing means. It just means just lay out all that extra stuff. Stop being darn extra. Relax. All right, keep going. And receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Uh-huh. But be ye doers of the word. And be not ye what? Only. Doers of the word. He said, you got to do it. And not what? And not hearers only. What's going to happen if you just are here? Deceiving your own selves. You just going to lie. If you just hearing the word, you just sitting up in here and every week you just aren't hearing the word. Right, watching it online, everything you every week you just aren't hearing the word. You don't do a darn lick of it. You know what you're doing? Deceiving you. You lying to your darn self. Right? Don't let nobody. I'm not gonna be the one to let you let you just sit here and lie to yourself, and make you feel okay with it. I'm gonna tell you, you lying to yourself. You ain't darn doing nothing. You better sit right here and go to hell, just like everybody else out there having fun. It's a darn good Friday night. Your butt better get out there and have some darn fun. What you gonna sit here, listen to some word for it, you gonna go to hell anyway? That don't make sense. I'm just. You make a decision. You got to do what you want to do. Right? If I'm going to go to hell, at least I'm going to do it, try to get some get some value out of it. But if you're going to go into the kingdom, let's do it right. Let's go into the kingdom. Let's do the word. Not, not, not just hear it. Right? Keep going. He for said, deceiving any, yourself. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Uh huh. For he beholds himself. And goes his way and straightway forget what manner of man he was. Uh huh. So the, the book show you exactly who you are. Book show you clearly. He said it's like a man looking in the mirror. Right? Any man that's like it here is a man who's looking in the mirror. And then after he look in the mirror, he go on and forget everything that he just looked at. Right? He said book showing you exactly who you are and you ignore that thing. Just keep moving. And that's exactly what we're doing. All right? Time for us to get it together. That's why we learn the law. Right? That's why we get the law. That's why we talked about last week. We try to understand that the Most High God gives us righteousness on credit. That's important for us to understand. A lot of people try to make it seem like, oh, well, you know, God, God just give us, you know, God died for all his children. And, uh, and uh, you know, everybody <laughs> have an opportunity to be saved. You're right. Everybody got an opportunity. You're right. He also died for all his children. Let's talk about it, though. Let's talk about the detail. Let's not, let's not stay high level. You know what I'm saying? At work, at work, we always got high level, and then, you know what I'm saying, then you get the details. You know what I'm saying? You do high level when you're in the meetings, you know what I'm saying? Then when you go to the people on the floor doing the work, you get the details. Our problem is we got a bunch of Christian teachers, Christian pastors that give us the high level when we're supposed to be doing the work. What do you think? You own a company, right? And somebody got to actually execute the plan. Got to execute the plan. You know what I'm saying? What's your company, Randy? Pick one. Pick a company that you own. 
Pick one. Whatever company you want to start. Go. Okay, car company. What you selling cars or you fixing cars? Selling. Okay, so you selling cars. All right, you own the company. You ain't about to sell no car. That don't make no darn sense. You pay people to sell cars. So you hire a new kid. He about to sell a car, right? You give him the high level. You tell him, okay, I need some cars to be sold. That's the high level, right? I need cars to be sold. When we sell these cars, we need to make sure we increase our percentages by X amount. That's high level, right? All right, go out there and do it. Is that enough information to tell him how to do it? He going to go out there and try to figure it out himself, ain't he? He be like, you know what? In my mind, I think this is the best way to sell a car. He haven't had training. He haven't had seen anybody who's seasoned, who's been through it, who knows the mistakes, who knows how to deal with people. He don't know. He don't know to pray on the wife. He don't know when the husband and wife come together, you pray on the wife emotions. Right? You just sit here and talk. You walk into a car dealership. They're going to sit there and they're going to talk directly to the wife. Hey, well, yeah, don't, oh, what about you? Don't you like this one? Because they know. They're like, yeah, pray on. He don't know that, though. He don't know none of the techniques. You know what he's going to go in there doing? Well, you know, the way I like to do business is honest business. I'm just going to lay it out for him and tell him the truth. Oh, that, I mean, that that's nice. Yeah, everybody like it that way. But that ain't going to work. That, that ain't how you get them percentages up. Right? So if you just stay high level, the work is going to be wrong. People got to fill in gaps. What, what are these Christian pastors doing for us? They give us high level. Right? They don't get to the grainy detail. That's what we need to do. Get to the grainy details. Make a left here. Make a right here. Don't do that. Do this. The stuff that make people uncomfortable. Right? All this stuff is what we try to get into. That's what the law is for. That's why we study the law. That's why we go into it. Because it's certain things. Once you understand the details of the law... Then you can look at the whole book and that thing open to you. Right? Once you understand that, the most high God accounted Abraham righteousness, right? Which means he gave it to him on credit. And you know when something's given to you on credit, you have to pay that back. You owe that. Right? Once you know that, then it's like, oh, I'm in debt to the most high God. I owe this man every, I literally owe this man my life. Everything I do got to be towards him. Otherwise, I'm not making my payments on time. Now it makes sense. Now you look at it. Now you can put yourself in perspective and say, this is how I obtain what I'm looking for. Right? If I wanted righteousness, I got to keep making my payments to the most I got. That's a fact. I mean, it ain't nothing else. You ain't no other way you can get around that. Right? That's how we look at it. People, you know you know, people look at, they'll look at, they'll be like, you know what? See, the thing about credit is, you know what I'm saying? Credit, you know what I'm saying? Credit amongst Hebrew, we didn't even give each other credit. That's not true. Credit just a loan. We got laws for loan. Grab, uh, grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15. <coughs> Problem is a lot of our people, especially Hebrew, I'm talking to the Hebrews now. You know what I'm saying? I talk to the Christian, talk to the Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the Hebrew don't know this law. A lot of them don't know this law. And I don't even say it to shame them, even though they should be ashamed. You know what I'm saying? I don't say it to shame them. I just say it to, to make sure that it's known so that we can we can take a step back and that the people who listening and who learning from these people, they can ask a question like, do I really want to learn from these guys? Right? We keep bumping our heads, going around in circles. I'm sick of this stuff. Like, let's, let's just move. Let's make some progress. All right? Let's come together about the word. Come together about all this other stuff. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15. Give me verse 1. Watch what he said. This is credit. Credit all through the law. Nobody taught you about credit in this book. This thing all through the law. Yeah, we just couldn't try to put on that interest. Huh? Brother, we just couldn't put on that interest. Book said we couldn't charge interest. All right? Book said we couldn't charge interest. Usury is what it called it. You can charge a credit, though. You can account it to them for righteousness. That's for sure. Keep going. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15, <coughs> verse 1. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lends aught unto his neighbor. Every creditor that lends aught unto his neighbor a what? Shall release it. Oh, shall release. I thought you said a Hebrew right there. Keep going. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Right? So, if the book tell you flat out, every creditor 
shall release in seven years. That's a book. Where do you think these people got it from? Remember last week I told you you got something on your credit? That thing, you know what I'm saying, get rid of it after seven years? That's where they got this thing from. For us, though, it wasn't like seven years from the time. Most I got is more righteous than that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't seven years from the time that you took it. It's not like, okay, Terrence loaned me money today. Seven years from now, it fall off. That's not how it works. Ours, we, every seven years, that's a set standard seven years for everybody. Every seven years, we had a year of release. You know what I'm saying? So then you reach that seven years, the re year of release, no matter what that. I don't care if you just got the debt last year. That thing got to get released. That's book for us. That's righteous for the most high God. So you look at it and you say, you don't think God going to follow the same law? If Yahushua, right, is giving us righteousness on credit, right? You don't think there comes a time that's a year of release? Can we ever pay that back? How are we going to pay it back? The man died for us. That means we would have to die. But at the end of the day, he giving us life. So that means we owe him again, right? Released. Right? That's the year of release. What do you think this is talking about? It's talking about Yahushua. You don't think he obey his own law? Everything he do to men, it's all law. Everything about it is lawful. These people just ain't lining it up for you. I don't see how you can't believe in man. There's a lot of people don't believe in Yahushua. A lot of Hebrews. They believe in the Old Testament. They don't believe in Yahushua. It's only because they don't know the law. I don't see how you can't, you can't not believe in him. You know the law. That ain't crazy. That's crazy. Law line them up so easily. How you not believe in the man? Excuse me. Grab a grab a First John chapter three. Right? It tells us very clearly. He say he say he say if it's your neighbor, your brother, you gotta release it. Hold on. Before we grab chapter three, keep going though. He said your neighbor, your brother, you gotta release it. Watch this. Of a foreigner, thou may exact it again. He said of a foreigner though. You don't think most high God keeping this law? Notice how he made the separation. He said, now look, if he of your nation, your brother, your neighbor, you got to release him. And that's that year of release. <coughs> However, of a foreigner, you can exact that thing again. Keep going. But that which is thine with thy brother, thine sh hand shall release it. Right? But if it's your brother, you can't. So if this person not part of your nation, not part of your inside, not a part of your group, you ain't got to release him from darn nothing. You can exact that thing. You dealing with a Gentile and a Gentile having converted to become Yisrael? You good. You can exact that thing. All right? Why do you think it's so? Now grab 1 first, first John chapter 3. Watch this. 1 John chapter 3, give me verse 6. Why do you think it's so important that the Most High God break these things down? Watch this. Verse 6, 1 John chapter 3, verse 6. Whosoever abides in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Mm -hmm. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, uh -huh. even as he is righteous. Mm -hmm. He that commits sin is of the devil, mm -hmm. for the devil sins from the beginning. Mm -hmm. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, mm -hmm. for his seed remains in him. Mm -hmm. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Mm -hmm. In this the children of God are manifest. In this the what? The children of God are manifest. So now he made a separation. <clears throat> he said, in this, the children of God are manifest. In what? In the children of the devil. He's trying to let you know. There's an inside group and there's an outside group. Right? I can release this inside group. The year of release come. When it comes time, when that day come, most of God said, I can release y'all. He said, with the outside group, I exact it. I need that. I'm going to exact it from they butt. The, uh, was the parable? He said he, he ain't going to get out until he paid every... Uh... Until he paid every darn... He said he ain't going to get out until he paid every darn thing back. That's how it works. He can exact it. Everybody else, they get released from their debt. Hush, boy. Don't you see the word being preached? What's wrong with you? Grab Romans for me. Romans chapter 8. This 
this Romans chapter 8. Give me verse 1. All we needed, all we needed this whole time is just for men of the most high God that'll, that'll be willing to teach the truth of the word flat out. You know what I'm saying? No matter what it do to their reputation, no matter what it do, just teach the word flat out. You know what I'm saying? I had one of these, uh, one of these girls at work, they came and tried to search out my Facebook page. And they saw, you know what I'm saying, I was talking about women can't preach and this, that, and other. You know what I'm saying? They told me, I don't want to go to your page. I was like, you ain't got to, I ain't asked you to go to my page. You can go to my page if you want to. I was like, but it's the truth. She was like, so you don't believe, so we've done training classes together. You don't believe, I was like, that ain't what I said. You should go back and read it some more. I was like, I don't care nothing about what you train in this, in this building. You know what I'm talking about? I said, a woman shouldn't be able to treat, teach a word. Right? Not, not to no man. That don't make sense. Doesn't make sense. That's book. The book say it. Why would that? That don't make sense. You teach whatever you want. You're dealing with something else. I don't care. I'll, you can teach me how to cook right now. You know what I'm saying? You can teach me, you can teach me how to change a tire if you want to. <laughs> I don't care nothing about it. Right? Don't try to teach me no Bible. Right? Don't try to teach me no Bible. Right? My mama didn't like it when I said that to her the other day. You know what I'm saying? Mama, you know what I'm saying? Mom just, you know what I'm saying, try to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, you know what I'm saying, listen, well, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, I can't sit here and learn from you the Bible. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nothing against you, not saying you don't know it. You know what I'm saying? She took what? See, that's the problem. It's like, I think you misunderstand what I'm saying. I can't. You know what I'm saying? It's not that. It's not. Let's say I wanted to. Let's say, let's say you had the exact information that I felt like I needed in the book. I have to have enough trust for the most high God that I'm going to find that somewhere else. People look at it wrong, like it's something against women. I ain't, I ain't trying to be, I don't care that being, being against women. I'm for God. Well, I'm sitting here and pretend like the book don't say what it say just because I want my mama to teach me something. Just because I want my wife to teach me some book. It ain't necessary. It's worth it. It's, for me, it's just a little bit more worth it. When the book say it, I just like going with what the book say. That thing ain't safe for me. I don't know about everybody. That thing ain't safe for me. I know that thing ain't going to play out right. And if you don't believe it's going to play out the right doing it by the book, that's because you don't trust the man. Don't get mad at me. All right? This is, uh, this is uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. <clears throat> there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in the Messiah, Yahushua, uh -huh. who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Notice he made that separation. No condemnation for who? The ones that are in the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh. Let's keep going. For the law of the spirit of life in the Messiah, Yahushua, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh-huh. <clears throat> For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That's right. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. That's right. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. That's right. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -hmm. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it cannot be subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. That word enmity, that's on sight. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen nobody say, man, when I see you, it's on sight. You know what I'm saying? That's what enmity is. You know what I'm saying? Enmity is. We at it. You know what I'm saying? He said in a carnal mind, it's against God. All right, keep going. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. He said they that are in the flesh cannot please God. What else? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Uh-huh. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Uh-huh. Now if any man have not the spirit of the Messiah, if he is If anybody none of his. don't have the spirit of the Messiah, he is what? None of his. He is none of his. Notice how it's important that it's making a separation. That's what it called when he, when when it when the book tells us to be holy. That's what it's called. Separate. Be separated. He's making a separation. Listen, if you don't got the spirit, you ain't none of his. And if you ain't none of his, mm, that means he can exact that. When he gave you that loan, right, when he loaned you righteousness, that means he can exact that to you and say, okay, you need, you got to pay all that. Right? The rest of us, we going to hit that year of release. Oh, you can't pay, huh? Okay. We're going to have that year of release. Right? What Bailey. else we got? Grab Romans 11. Right. Go, uh, Bailey, go ahead and grab them. Bailey. You know what I'm saying? You got to do it. You don't, you don't pay what they're going to do. They're going to put a judgment against you. They're going to garnish your wages. Or they're going to put your butt in jail. 
right? Well, you say you it's want. Romans 11. Give me verse uh, 16. For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. Uh huh. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Uh huh. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partake of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if you boast, you bear not the root, but the root bears you. Uh huh. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Mm hmm. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. All right. Be not high minded, but fear. All right? He's now he's describing in a parable, in the sense of a parable, he's describing a plant. All right? And he taught he's describing two types of plants, of the same type of plant, but two one is wild and one is natural. All right? So you got one that's just out there growing, and you got one that's like kind of, you know, grown by the owner of the plant. So then he said, he said, the most high God took the branches off of this plant and broke them off. Right? But these are branches that naturally grown from this very plant. Broke them off. Right? And he said what he did is he went out to a wild plant and broke some branches off of that that were dying and then attached them. It's called grafted them in. Grafted them in to this plant so that they can take from this plant and continue to grow. Right? And by doing that, he made the branches, the wild branches, holy. Because the root is holy. Right? So the energy that comes from this branch, I take this twig, it's dying on this other tree. I took it and I attached it to this tree, wrap, you know what I'm saying? They what they do is they wrap a leaf around it and they attach, you know what I'm saying, the, the branch, the piece of a branch to a, a wild branch, and then this other branch continues to grow as part of this tree. Right? It's a real method, it happens all the time. Right? So he's saying, he's saying, now listen, these were wild branches that got brought in, but at the end of the day, they part of this tree now. He said. Now, these wild branches got in, and they wild. Don't you know that these other ones that got broken off, they can get put right back on there? And it's easier for them because they was natural to this plant. Like, this is where they came from anyway. If I take them off and put them back on, it's easier to keep them growing. So that's how I got looking at it. But watch this. <clears throat> Thou say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Uh-huh. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Mm -hmm. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Mm -hmm. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not you. Mm -hmm. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. Mm -hmm. On them which fail severity, but toward you goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you also shall be cut off. He told him straight up, your buddy get cut off too. Because the whole point is, if you get cut off of the branch, guess what? Now you're outside. Huh? Cut off the root. Yeah, I'm sorry. You get cut off of the root. Now you're an outsider. And if you're an outsider, that thing can be exacted. Everything in this book, we look at it make a separation because it all goes back to this law. It said if it's your neighbor or your brother, you need to release him. If it's a foreigner, you can exact it. So you see, even with Gentiles, Gentiles become neighbors and brothers. Because they get grafted in just like they are part of the tree. And your butter end up becoming a foreigner because he'll break your butt off. No matter how you look at that thing, it's all about obedience. Do what the Most High God say. He'll separate your butt. You don't. If you get separated, that thing, gonna, that debt going to be exacted to you. Period. It's Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5. That's law. The Most High God had to set it up that way. How else is he gonna say? If the law said, if the law say that's how it works, how he gonna do anything else? He gotta keep the law. The whole thing go off the law. What you hitting me for? Go on, boy. I'm trying to talk about this word. I don't know what your darn problem is. Look at that belly. All right, all right, go on. Go on. It's Hebrews chapter 5. Give me verse 8. Though he were a son. He said, though he were a son. This is talking about Yahushua. Yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Yahushua learned obedience through the things that he suffered. What else? And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. And through that, he was made perfect. Right? He learned obedience. He learned how to obey the law. No. No. <coughs> 
You think that stopped? Everything that we look at, he learned how to obey the law. He had to learn the law to obey it. That's why we see things happen in precise detail. But you'll never know this unless you get down to the detail. Right? This is Numbers chapter 30. Watch this. Let's learn this law. It's about the uh, the vow. The vow. The vow. Yeah. yeah, you got Hebrews. You got Hebrew. I was talking to a Hebrew. He was telling me, you know what I'm saying, the Messiah can't be, you know what I'm saying, the Messiah can't be the, the people, the, the man that we think is the Messiah can't be the Messiah. You know why? Because he supposedly died for another man's sin. That's how he know the, that's how he told me that's how he know the whole New Testament is false. Because a man, according to our law, can't die for another man's sin. Right? And a person could think that, right? If you look at it, if you look at the law, even what we read last week, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, the most High God told us that the soul who sinned is mine. You know what I'm saying? He said, the son don't die for the dad. The dad don't die for the son's sin. He said, the soul that sinned, that's the one that's mine. Yeah, he going to make pay for it. still ain't broken because the Messiah ain't dead. No, nah, that's one thing. The Messiah ain't dead, right? But we look at it, first of all, is that the law? Not the law. That's prophecy. And then it don't even contradict the law. But let's talk about the law, right? Since that's what we thought. We get from that, and then we made a law unto ourselves of what we did. We literally, we read that. We see he. See? The law say a uh, soul can't die for another soul. Right? We read that, and that's what we got from that. It can't happen. But now this is the actual law. What I'm taking you to is actual law. This came, this came before. Right? Let's read through it. Let's try to understand. Verse 1. It's verse 1. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Mm -hmm. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Uh huh. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord, and bind herself by a bond, mm -hmm. being in her father's house in her youth, if she in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she has bound her soul, uh huh. And her father shall hold his peace at her, uh huh. And all her vows shall stand, uh huh. And but, every bond wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. So what this is saying is, if a man say, "Listen, this is a vow," now he, excuse me, if a man make a vow like, "Hey, this is what I'm gonna do, and this is what I promise to do," or whatever, then the Most High God said he's bound by that. Like, you know what I'm saying? You make that promise, you need to go, you got to follow through with it. Right? Same thing for a woman. He said, the woman, she make a vow, she got to follow through with it. But, if that woman is in the house of her father, in the father, so a woman sit here and say, you know what, I'm going to pay you every two weeks for the next year to pay back off of this loan. Right? If she make that vow, and she in her father's house, and the father hear it, then he can hear it, and he can be like, Mm, nah, she ain't gonna do that, and then it'll nullify it right there at that moment, right? Even though she want to do it, since she's in her father's house, the father could be like, nah, that's not happening, right? I already know her; she ain't gonna be able to do it. She don't even make her own money. I pay all her bills. No, that's not gonna happen, cause she in her father's house. Why should it keep going? But if her father disallow her in the day that she hear it, that he hear it. Not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. her. The Lord shall do what? Forgive her. Now she's forgiven on account of her father. Her father, all her father has to say is no. And just out of that, she's out of her bound. She's released. That easy. She's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I make payments. Her father hear that? No, that's not going to happen. She's forgiven. She ain't even gotta. She ain't even gotta go through with it. A man, if a man say something like that, I don't care what happened. You gotta go through with it. A woman, you and her father. If she in her father's house, nah, she good. Why should it keep going? And if she had at all an husband when she vowed or uttered out out of her lips. Now let's say she wasn't in her father's house. She's in her husband's house. She had a husband, and she said that she made a vow, and it came out of her lips. What else? Wherewith she bound her soul. And her husband hear it and held his peace at her in the day that... Zakai, stop. 
Then her vow shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound, her soul shall stand. Uh huh. But if her, her husband, husband heard it, he didn't say nothing. Books say that thing gonna stand. He heard it. He didn't. He wasn't like nah, nah, nah. That thing ain't gonna fly. You know what I'm saying? He heard it. He didn't say nothing. That thing book at that point. Like, right, you gotta follow through with that thing, woman. All right, keep going. But if her husband disallow her on the day that he hears it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed and that which she uttered with her lips. Wherewith she bound her soul of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. Right? And if her husband do it, it's of none effect, and the Lord will forgive her. That easy. Right? That's what we're looking at with the Most High God. Right? At, at Sinai, we made, at the Mount Horeb, right? When the Most High God spoke to her from the mountain, we made a vow. We told her very specifically, everything that you say, we will do, and we will obey. Right? The Most High God was in the position. He cared, uh, grab, uh, grab, uh, grab, uh, grab uh, Jeremiah chapter three, verse. Mm, give me verse one. Let's just read. This is very, Jeremiah chapter three, verse one. Watch this. Remember, if she in the husband house or if she in the father house, and watch how the Most High God always characterizes Himself to us. As a husband and as a father. He has to keep the law. <clears throat> chapter 3. This is, uh, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 3, starting at verse 1. <coughs> this is Most High God talking about Yisrael. All right? Talking about us. And remember, we just read in Romans chapter 11 that Yisrael is like a root that grafts in Gentiles and grafts in everybody. To be a part of this same root. So that means anybody who served God is essentially a part of Yisrael. All right? Keep going. Watch this. It's Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Uh -huh. Yet return again to me, says the Lord. Uh huh. Lift up your eyes into the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. Uh huh. In the ways has in in the ways has you set for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Mm -hmm. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou had a whore's forehead. Thou refuse to be ashamed. Will you not, will thou not from this time cry unto me, my father, thou art the God my of who? my youth? My father. So now he just got done talking about a woman that's committing whoredom, that's cheating on him. And then he go back and say, will you not come back and say my father? He characterized himself as two things, a husband and a father. Watch this. He'll keep going. Watch the next verse. Will he reserve his anger forever? Mm -hmm. Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou could. Mm -hmm. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel has done? Uh -huh. She has gone up every, gone upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there has played the harlot. Mm -hmm. And I said after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me, but she returned not. Uh -huh. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it, and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, mm -hmm. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. He did. He gave her a bill of what? Divorce. That sounds like a wife. So look, he characterizing himself as a father and again as a wife. Watch, keep going. And as a husband. I mean, as a husband. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredoms that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with so stocks. Mm -hmm. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah has not turned unto me with her whole heart, mm -hmm. but faintly says the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, the backsliding Israel has justified herself more than the treacherous Judah. Mm -hmm. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, return, thou backsliding Israel, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. Mm -hmm. For I am merciful, says the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Mm -hmm. Only acknowledge your iniquities that you have transgressed against the Lord your God and mm -hmm. have scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. Mm -hmm. and ye have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. 
Turn, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married unto you. I am what? Married unto you. I am what? Married unto you. I am married unto you. Husband and father. Because it's law. If the father hear the vow, if the husband hear the vow, they can disannul that thing. Right? They can disannul. That ain't it. Grab, uh, grab, uh, what else I want here? Grab, uh, grab Deuteronomy chapter 5. Watch this. This Deuteronomy chapter 5. All right? If the father hears it or if the husband hears it according to the law, he can disannul and the wife will be forgiven. The daughter will be forgiven. All right? Go to what? This is Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 22. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire, out of the cloud and the thick darkness with a great voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. <coughs> and it came to pass when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, even the heads of your tribes and your elders, and ye said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. Uh-huh. We have seen this day that God does walk with man and he lives. Right? This is us talking now. We said, we saw the day the most high God walked with man and he lives. What else? Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore. Then we shall die. Uh huh. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Uh huh. Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. He said, We will do what? Hear it and do it. There's our vow. Right? We just told him, we said, you know what? You tell us what the Most High God say. And guess what? We will hear it and we will do it. We started this off. James told us we got to be hearers and doers. Where do you think James got it from? From our law. That's what we promised. That was our vow. How James going to tell us that anything else going to get you into the kingdom when that's what our, that was our vow from the beginning? We will hear it and do it. So now if I come along and I'm only a hearer, you didn't commit to the original vow. <coughs> These people don't know the law. How are you going to try to teach the New Testament you don't know the law? Keep going. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when ye spake unto me. And uh -huh. the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which uh -huh. they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. He said they well said. Did he disannul it though? Let's see. Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Mm, look at that. Most High God, who characterized himself as our father and as our husband, he heard the vow from us, but he didn't disannul it. At that moment, he was like, mm, I wish they kept that energy forever. I, I wish that they stayed like that. Oh, that they would just stay like that forever. It'd be good with their children. He didn't disannul it, though. He didn't say, nah, y'all ain't going to be able to do that. If he did that, could have forgave us of it right there. But he didn't, because that's our law. Our law says, as a father and a husband, he could have disannulled it right there. That's why he had to characterize himself that way, to show that he confirmed the fact that we did that. He had the authority to confirm the fact that that was our vow, and he stuck with it. Right? Same thing with Yahushua. Yahushua, in the same way, comes... And he keeps the law. Right? If someone was going to be forgiven, when Yahushua was here and he forgave people, did he forgive anybody outside of the law? No. No, he can't. Even, even uh, grab John 8. Grab John chapter 8, verse 1. That's why he had to pay the price. He held his peace. So then he was like, now, do what I say. Grab John chapter 8, verse 1. They don't believe the Messiah would have had her ex. Huh? I said, they don't believe the Messiah would have had her ex if, uh, she would've, if it would have been according to the law. If they would have did it according to the law, he wouldn't have been able to like say, no, don't do it. You know what I mean? What you mean? Like, 
the way they brought her up on adultery. Like, if, that, if they would have did it exactly according to the law, he wouldn't have said, don't do it. Oh, exactly, yeah. Yeah, what are you talking about? What we about to read right now. We gonna look, we gonna look, it was a woman that was caught in adultery, and they brought the woman, right? And what he telling you is, what he telling you is right. If if we didn't, if if they would have brought her according to the law, according to exactly how our law was written, there's no way in the world y'all sure would have been like, you know what I'm saying, no, nah, you good, go free. You know what I'm saying, who condemns you now? You know, he couldn't have said that. Well, let's read it real quick. This is John chapter 8, verse 1. Watch this. Yahushua went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Mm -hmm. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. Right? The woman, he said, she was caught in the very act, they said. In other words, they <laughs> saw her committing adultery. Can, can adultery be committed with two people or one person? Two. Got to have at least two people. Right? So they said they caught her in that very act. But guess who they brought? The woman. You don't see nothing read about the, the man coming along. They just brought the woman to her. Right? Let's read it. Let's read it. Now Moses and the law commanded us that we should, that we, that such should be stoned. He said Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. Let's read the law. Grab, uh. Hold what we got right there. We're going to come right back to it. Grab Deuteronomy chapter 17 for me. It's Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 1. It's Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 1. Let's see, let's see this law they're talking about. All right. Then we're going to go back and we're just going to compare and contrast what actually happened. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish, uh -huh. or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. If there be found among you within any of your gates which the Lord God has given you, man or woman that has wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord God in transgressing his covenant, and has gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun, moon, or any other host of the heaven which I had not commanded, mm -hmm. and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and, in, and inquired di diligently, and behold, it, it, it be true, and the thing certain that such abomination is done in Israel, mm -hmm. then shall you bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shall stone them with stones till they die. Mm -hmm. As a mouth of two or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. Mm -hmm. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. At the mouth of one witness, they shall not be put to death. Right? I think it's uh, Deuteronomy 21 is what I want. Right? But that's good, too. At the mouth of one witness, they shall not to be put to death. You got to have two or three witnesses to put them to death. Right? Yeah. All right. He said, you gotta, he said if that thing been told to you, that there's some, some wickedness going on, you got to search that thing out. And you diligently, and you find out that thing is true. He said, then you got to find you two or three witnesses. You find two or three witnesses, that person could be stoned. And guess, hold on, go back real quick. Go back, go back. 17, what verse we leave off? Six. Verse 6, give me verse 7. Watch it. Watch what he say after he tell us at the mouth of two or three witnesses. Watch what he say. <clears throat> this book, they don't know nothing about this law. Watch this. <laughs> the hands of the witness shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hands of the people. So thou shalt put away the evil from among you. You got two, excuse me, you got two or three witnesses, and guess who gotta guess who gotta throw the first, cast the first stone? The one that saw. The witness. The one that saw it. Now these people brought her and they came up and they said, we caught her in the very act. That means they saw her do it. They saw her do it. What do I want? 21? Deuteronomy 21? I don't know if it's 21. It might be something else, though. It's about the slain in the land. Like when they, when somebody's slain, they got to figure out who did it. That's what 21 is saying? Yeah. No, that's not what I want there. 22? Uh, yeah, it might be, yeah. yeah. One verse. Should be early in 22, right? 22 verse 1, right? Mm, he's saying don't, 
see your brother's ox or sheep going nah, straight. That ain't, that ain't what I want. 23 Talks, verse 1? Uh, no. Uh, you want 22, 22 around that. Yeah. All right. Give me 22, 22. I thought it was the beginning, though. You sure? Uh, that was no, the beginning of the chapter. Nope. You sure that's what I want? Mm, yeah. So, first, you can talk about the damsel's father saying, I gave my daughter to this man. He don't see no, the version. But then, at the end of it, it's saying, if a man's found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they both, both of them shall die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So, y'all put away. You want that one? Mm. Or maybe look for Leviticus 20. Nah, it's not Leviticus 20. It's uh, Leviticus give me, 18. Give me Deuteronomy 20. We already tried 21, right? Yeah. So give me Levit Deuteronomy 20. I think that's what I want. Uh, it starts off with talking about battle against your enemies. Nah, that's not what I want either. 24? Give me 24. 24, chapter 1. Taking a wife and married her, and it comes that she found no favor in his eyes. Read down, see if see if that's what I want. I feel like that's what I want. You don't talk about adultery at all. He's mm. talking about putting her away. After that, though. Uh, let's see. When a man is taking a new wife, uh, no man shall take either of a millstone. Take heed in the plague of leprosy. Into your brother. All right, no. All right, All right so go back to go, go back to twenty two. Yeah, let's read through that. Twenty two, twenty two says, if a man be bound lying with a woman married to her husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman. Oh, this is what I want. My and bad. the woman. So shall thou put away the evil from Israel. Uh huh. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed to a husband. Right, so that's good. Okay. So it tells us very flat. He said, they both shall die, right? He said, if a man get caught laying with a woman, they shall both die, the man and the woman, right? Now watch when we go back. It's a few things we already learned from our law. One, man and a woman caught, both of them got to die. Two, on top of that, it said you got to have two or three witnesses. Three, if somebody going to stone, the first one to do it got to be a witness. The witness got to be the first one to do it. Now, remember all three of them laws, and that's, let's watch what Yahushua did here. This this John chapter 8, we can start right back at verse 1. And Yahushua went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst... They said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law In the very him. act they caught. That means they saw the man too. Guess who they didn't bring? Didn't bring the man. That's the first law. They broke. Right? Keep going. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But mm -hmm. what sayest thou? Mm -hmm. This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. Now Yahushua could have easily just taught them some law right here. But he didn't. Watch how he handled this. But Yahushua stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Uh huh. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself and said unto them, "He that is without sin among you, let him cast. Let him first cast a stone." He said, yeah. "Whoever is without sin, let you cast the first stone." They all came up to her and they said, "We are the witnesses. We caught her in the very act. That means they're they're witnesses, right?" So he didn't tell them nothing wrong. Go ahead, cast the first stone. Whoever whoever without sin, you go ahead and be the first one to cast. Y'all all witnesses, right? Whichever one is without sin, then you go first. Let's see what happened. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Uh -huh. and they which heard it being convinced by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest even to the last. Okay. And Yahshua was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And when Yahshua had lifted himself, lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Uh -huh. Has no man condemned you? Uh-huh. And she said, No man, Lord. Uh-huh. And Yahshua said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. All that was lawful. They walked away. For whatever reason that they walked away, they walked away. So he can't stone her. He didn't see it. He wasn't a witness. You got to have two or three witnesses. Then after you have two or three witnesses, you got to have one of those witnesses started off. 
And if the witness ain't got the heart to put the stone against her, then she can't be stoned. Go free. You gotta have a man and a woman. You gotta have a man and a woman. Hey, that's where you gotta start. You call you call him in the act. You gotta bring the man and a woman. Otherwise, that thing ain't even lawful to be in with. Whole time, y'all sure just broke that whole thing down. He's in there. I ain't listening. To nothing. He's writing in the ground. I ain't listening. To nothing these people talking about. Y'all, all y'all hearts is wicked. You want to try to halfway keep the law for your own your own reasons. Had they would have had everything required. If everything was lawful, her butt would have been stoned that very day. But because it wasn't lawful, guess what he can say? I don't condemn you either. So go sin no more. He, you see, he ain't not he acknowledged your butt sin. Don't sin no more. He ain't acknowledge that she ain't sin. Yeah, everybody According to the law, though, what I'm going to do about it? Everybody likes to think that he let her go because it don't matter what you do. Mm. Uh. All right? They like think that he went against the law. No. On the contrary. It's a lot of people that teach the law, try to act like they keep the law, that are working against the law. Our law is perfect. Our law is, our law, our law is lined up real nice. You just go with it. There's a lot of people that don't know it because they don't know the details. Yahushua, there's no way he could have immediately spotted that unless he knew the details of the law. You walk up to him, well, she did commit adultery. Yeah, you commit adultery, you're supposed to be stoned. Mm, do got some witnesses. That's it, I mean, that's all you really need. Nah, not when you got the details. You look at them details like, mm, you caught her in the act and she's the only one here. Okay. In that case, which one of y'all without sin? Go ahead and go ahead and catch the first stone. Everybody start getting guilty. You know what I'm saying? Oh, because they know they didn't do it according to the law. Oh, okay, you don't you don't want to you don't want to catch the first stone, huh? All right, so everybody start walking away. Okay, well lawfully, I don't have two or three witnesses, and I can't throw the stone anyway because I'm not a witness. You good? Go ahead, go free. Right? You line that thing up with the details. You you absolve yourself. They can call him a sinner all they want. He know I kept the law today. These people think he broke the law. We look at it. He kept the law. Everything that the man does has to go according to the law. Right? That's why you look at when the most high God, when we, when we made our vow on that mount, that's why you look at it. He kept his peace. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say yay. He didn't say nay. He just let it. He said, you know what? Only if y'all kept that same energy. Only if y'all y'all stay with that same idea, it'd be good for your children. Let's go back to Numbers chapter thirty. Where we leave off. This is Numbers chapter thirty, uh, verse eight. This is Numbers eight. chapter thirty, verse eight. Watch this. All right? If the husband or the father hears the vow of the woman, right? He can, nul he can nullify that thing. And the Most High God will forgive her right there. Us being characterized as the daughter and the wife, when the Most High God heard us on Mount Sinai, he could have nullified that thing right there, but he didn't. He kept his peace. He said, you know what? All right. Y'all well spoken. Right? In other words, he said, I affirmed it. Yep. That's y'all agreement. That's y'all vow. That's y'all bond. Now y'all bound it. He said, I affirm it. Y'all well spoken. All right? Let's see. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow what she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. Uh huh. But every vow of a widow, and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. Uh huh. And if she vowed in her husband's house, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it, and uh -huh. held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. So now this is book. The Most High God heard us, and he, he didn't say nothing about it. Therefore, our vow stands. That means we are accountable for it, because he is our husband and our father. Right? Book said the husband heard it, and he just ride with it. He said that vow stand. That's law. So our vow stood, but watch this. But if her husband has utterly made them void on the day he heard them, mm -hmm. then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Uh -huh. Her husband has made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. That didn't happen, because he didn't say nothing, right? He kept his peace. He said, they well spoken. 
All right, keep going. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul her husband may establish it, or her husband may make it void. Uh huh. But if her husband altogether hold his peace, but her if her day, husband altogether hold his peace, that's what the Most High God did. Keep doing from day to day. From day to day. Then he established all her vows, or all her bonds which are upon her. All this time, the Most High God been establishing all our vows. This whole time, he just been establishing our vows. He right? From day them. to day. He did what? Confirms them. He confirmed. You know what he said? They well spoken. He confirmed our vows. That means it stands we're going to be held accountable for our vow. But watch this. Because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall in any ways make them void after he had heard them. He said if in any way the husband makes it void after he heard them, what's going to happen? Then he shall bear her iniquity. What do you mean somebody can't die for your sin? Man just told you if the husband don't nullify her vow, day by day he confirm it, then come back later at a later time and be like, nah, we ain't going to work with that. You know what? Her sin on you now, boy. Why do you think Yahushua had to come? There was a debt. Why do you think he died? That was a debt. Talking this new covenant stuff, you got to die for that. You can't kill God. He had to become a man. There was a debt. These people don't know no darn law. I be trying to tell them all the time. Just sit down. Learn the law. You can look at it. The book is telling you very clearly. You so busy trying not to be confused by the white man religion. Just sit your butt down and learn something. Book just told you right there. Who going to bear the iniquity? If the husband bear the iniquity. I mean, let's just talk. I mean, if you commit a sin and you're supposed to, I don't know, die, then what's the iniquity that go against the husband? Yeah. So, I mean, if the Most High God characterized himself as a husband and then brought himself in the flesh as a man, and then he, I don't know, died <coughs> of no fault of his own. But because we didn't confirm our vow. Because we didn't keep our vow, he died. He bears our iniquity. Now you can read Isaiah 53 and then make a little bit more sense. The bride of the Messiah has made herself ready. Mm -hmm. Now you can read Revelations and you see why it's talking about the bride and the bridegroom. Right? All this stuff make a little bit more sense when you look into it. You can look at the New Testament now and you can be like, oh, that's the law. Everything got to tie back to the law. These people ain't, when we look, read Paul, we read Jane, we read John, these people ain't just coming up with something out of nowhere. Why do you think John telling you about, you know what I'm saying, sons of, sons of God and sons of the devil? He trying to tell you, man, these is foreign. This is our brother. Matter of fact, if we would have kept reading, he would he would have told, crap, just so, I mean, just, just before we get out of here. This is 1 John chapter 3. I think we left off, what, verse 13, verse 12? 14. This is. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. Watch this. Remember, we started off in Deuteronomy chapter 15. Most High God told us by the hand by the hand of Moses. He said, He said, if uh He said you can you can you can lend and you got a release at the seventh year to your neighbor or your brother. Now remember, this is what this is what John is telling us. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. Verse 10. He, verse 10? Yeah. Okay, 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Uh-huh. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God. Uh -huh. Neither he that loves not his brother. He, neither he that loves not his what? Brother. Why the brother get brought into it? He talking about God and the devil. Where the brothers come from? You don't think these brothers, they know the law. Everything they're telling you is based off of the law. He's trying to tell you, if it's not your brother, you can't exact it. We talking about an inside group here. You got to be a part of this group. You got to love your brother. That's book. This whole book is telling the same thing. Old Testament, New Testament, you can call it, you Testament, wherever you want to. That whole book telling you the same thing. Old Testament is just teaching you about the new. New Testament is just revealing the old. Right? Whole thing just lined up like a darn eight. You know what I'm talking about? That thing just tied back into the other. Y'all disconnecting it and y'all never learned the book. 
And you go out here and teach people, and people get confused, and they end up walking away from what we're talking about. All because these people make a darn mess of it. It makes sense. Guess what you got to do for it to make sense? Do it. That's about it. Any questions? Let's pray out.